It seems to me that we are work evolving, the human race is evolving in the direction where we face our destiny, pointing in two different paths, two contrary paths. One is the path in which we go on seeking our own advantage at the expense of others. We exploit others in order to become more wealthy, more powerful, more domineering. We continue to subscribe to the domination worldview which currently holds sway virtually over the entire world. If we subscribe to this worldview and we continue under the to follow the dictates of that worldview, then we are heading to apocalypse, complete annihilation of humanity and human life on Earth. The other direction in which we're moving, or the other option that we can choose, is the option of cooperation and partnership. And this is not generosity in the sense that I have wealth and I give it to you. At the same time that I prescribe to you what kind of structural adjustment policies you have to implement, what kind of government you have to follow, what kind of culture you have to adopt, what kind of restaurants, McDonald's, Pizza Hut, whatever you have to open in your towns and cities. So it's not that kind of generosity based on the discrimination I give to you. But this alternative is what I would call the complete open generosity of the spirit, or maybe what Adam calls a radical acceptance, where we regard our wealth, our possessions, our fortune, our prosperity, not as ours, things that we can give to those who are deprived of it, but as part of the commonwealth that we have to share with everybody so that everybody can live with honor, with dignity, sustaining their lives at the physical level, developing their social virtues, their ability to govern themselves, to develop their own economy and social structures, and then to apply themselves to the development of the higher faculties, the spiritual faculties, according to whatever system of faith, worship, contemplation they wish to follow. And so we find ourselves facing this double path, this path moving, this path which branches off in these two directions. And the hope for humanity, the only hope, lies in rejecting that path of egotism, self-seeking, and domination, and adopting the path of self-sacrifice, generosity of spirit, and boundless, active compassion for the well-being of others. What I call, in one of my essays, I call it conscientious compassion. Not compassion just as a beautiful, uplifting, inward sympathy, but as a compassion which is driven and which in turn motivates that sense of conscience that will not allow one to tolerate a world in which 10 million people die every year from hunger, 60% of them children. A world in which Diseases that could easily be obliterated with just a small investment are allowed to continue and proliferate because we have to use the wealth to develop weapons with the idea that in this our security lies. Rather, our true security, as I see it, lies in this openness of the spirit, this freely mobile generosity. And I see the work of Buddhist global relief to be
just one little cell in this emerging organism of generosity, conscience, compassion, and sacrifice for the well-being of the whole. Just as each cell of the body contributes in its own way to the well-being of this organism, this bodily organism, so throughout the US, throughout Europe, in many other countries, Asia and Africa, these cells are emerging. New cells filled with vitality, inspired by this new vision of selfless giving to protect, sustain, and support humanity, life, and the earth itself. And if we all cooperate and make our voices heard in unison, forgetting minor differences, we all have that capacity to transform the earth and usher in a period of peace, prosperity, of, in the words of the Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, and happiness for all people.